Um, had a bit of time to think through how I was going to pull the story together of uh, creating connected places through the power of building data. So I'll give it a go. So for buildings, expectations are changing. Um, there's a growing reliance on OPEX for infrastructure upgrades. Uh, emerging technologies are becoming viable quickly, uh, evolving safety and cyber security needs, and just to, just to touch on sustainability tar targets are expanding. 43% um, of Fortune 500 companies have committed to renewable energy and sustainable targets as of 2016. And it's good to see cities that are driving targets themselves when some countries are not aligning with, say, global targets like COP21. I know it might not come as a surprise, but the question is, what is the appropriate response? I think you've seen these st uh, statistics before. Um, buildings consume 40% of all energy. They use roughly 25% of all water, and they emit 33% of all greenhouse gases. And I, I'm sure you've seen these stats before, but at Siemens, we've taken a major uh, responsibility initiative within the organisation ourselves. We've actually committed to becoming carbon neutral by 2030, and that would make us one of the leading industrial organisations in the world to be carbon neutral. Uh, we announced this in September 2015. We have four levers, driving energy efficiency, uh, leveraging uh, distributed energy systems, which I'll touch on a bit later, purchasing green energy and redu reducing fleet emissions. So far, we've kicked off 40 projects across the Siemens portfolio, and that can be office buildings to factories around the world. Uh, 16 projects have been completed. Um, we've already spent about 40 million euro on these projects, and the key KPI for all these projects was they must be a return of investment within five years. So all the energy efficiency optimization must be paid back within five years on energy savings. So these are our commitments to sustainability, but digitalization of buildings is enabling the industry to achieve these goals and many more. So as you saw from the video, buildings are talking. And today, today's technology is allowing us to understand their messages so that the lives of people and businesses within them can excel. So how are businesses improving as a result of these connected buildings? Connected buildings work with businesses to contribute their success, whether it's providing insights into operation and assets performance, improve productivity with uh, well-being of employees, generate savings to reinvest uh, as needed, and strengthen public perception and increase property values. So they're becoming an active contributor to our businesses. So connected buildings understand uh, with the expansion or the explosion of Internet of Things, um, there's a massive potential of getting data out of connected buildings. We expect the 60% growth rate in data collected from smart buildings year on year. And the challenge is to find new ways to enhance the buildings and drive experiences for our customers, not just reducing energy costs, but also reducing life cycle costs of the building and building assets. I think an area that we have tremendous potential is the area of artificial intelligence, cognitive learning, machine learning. And when we can apply or apply that technology with the data that's coming out of buildings, we'll see a major transformation um, within the building and providing a degree of analytics and optimization almost unimaginable some jet lag. Um, connected buildings communicate. Being an old uh, Siemens controls guy for, from the industry, I'm very excited that we have a huge opportunity identifying potential optimization opportunities with communicating buildings. Digital buildings that communicate can tell us 
which equipment is consuming too much energy, when and where. Compare full operational scenarios, simulate the impact before and then track the actual results when implemented. And with buildings that communicate, we can benchmark across portfolios and across, across campuses, anywhere and any time. But of course, buildings and connected buildings must remain secure. Digital buildings will not evolve without adequate cyber security protection. The advantage of connected devices to IoT is also the biggest threat to cyber security. This is required to protect products, technologies, services, processes, to safeguard building assets, hardware, software, networks, and the unauthorized access of attack. Uh, a statistic that I pulled out was cyber crime is widespread and the cost of the global economy $40 billion, $400 billion a year annually. So it's huge. So we have to focus on the security. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard about digital twins. Uh, digital twins provide real-time accuracy, unlimited simulation and optimization, common data repository, and static and dynamic building representation. And digital twins provide a dynamic virtual model for physical buildings, a part, a product, or a process using comprehensive live data. Digital twins are widely used in the process and manufacturing industry. In the manufacturing industry, example, car maker. Usually are thousands of products are produced from one digital twin. And there are different types of digital twin models that can be used for the building industry in pre-construction, during construction and post-construction phase. The combination all, call it the trinity of digital twins, will be the centerpiece of future solutions and service business, encapsulating the whole building during the full life cycle of its life. The rapid development of BIM over the last few years is central to the development of digital twins for buildings and working processes to use optimization the management and the construction of buildings. I believe BIM is the biggest lever we have to unleash the power of digital twins for the construction industry. Connected buildings provide flexibility, adaptable, agile workspace management, optimized space for organizational needs, promotion and collaboration of productivity, occupant sensing and engagement. Digitalization will change everything, how we live and how we work. Buildings have to be flexible, sustainable and comfortable. Indoor positioning is a technology that has moved out of the pilot phase and is now being developed in a variety of vertical markets. Things like navigation, analytics, asset tracking, emergency management are often key in such projects as improving building user efficiency, experiences, optimization of building processes, and generating new insights. Digitalization will transform the building operation and maintenance, providing the integrated platform for all elements of managing a building. The role of the FM, the facility manager, will change in connected buildings being supported by digital systems or processes along the conventional day-to-day -day maintenance and the general management tasks. We'll see maintenance move from preventative maintenance to predictive tasks. For example, a potential pump problem could be identified because of the flow rate has been reduced. Or a compressor's lifetime could be extended due to lower monitored operation hours than previously thought. So unplanned outages are reduced and servicing can be optimised. I touched on before, connected buildings promote well-being. You're sitting in your cramped conference room for a four-hour meeting. You, you want to stand up, stretch your legs and get some fresh air, but you can't. There's too much work to do. Um, by the time you end the mini marathon with your colleagues, you're mentally drained, you have a headache and you go home at 2 p.m. Happens every second day, because the airflow is not there. 
People are generally the most expensive cost for organisations. The fact that you spend $10 on utilities and $1,000 are spent on salaries. A digital building will help people be more productive, lower level of sickness and absentee. Health and wellbeing has long been the central to building rating systems like Green Star, especially in Australia here, Bream, LEED, and operating performance systems like Neighbours. And we see a continued uptake of buildings, new and old, voluntary and mandatory, implementing green building rating systems around the world. And connected buildings perform sustainability. Connected buildings provide a level of monitoring and control which seamlessly enables systems to optimise based around not only the needs of the users but also wider environmental drivers. Sustainable buildings have lower operating costs through minimised demands and automating operation. So connected buildings continue our journey towards a better economy and I'll call it the three Ds, but we're seeing the whole energy economy change because of decarbonisation, decentralisation and digitalisation. Although the reasons of change and impact may vary from region to region, country to country, but there's still some overarching key trends that are driving the market all over the world. The overall goal is to decarbonise the energy system. How we generate power, how we transmit it, and how we distribute it. A global shift towards decarbonisation, for example, is making electricity an increasingly important source of energy across many industries and areas of life. Take the uptake of wind, PV and storage that are becoming cost-effective solutions that we provide to our customers. Drivers of change are digitalisation and decentralisation, which offers huge opportunities for us and our customers. Centralised energy structures are changing as key assets are becoming increasingly distributed. This started with power generation is now spreading across such areas as storage solutions and microgrids. So, how do we pull this all together and what does it look like in practice? We touched on digitalisation, connectivity, decarbonisation, wellbeing, efficiency. So, I have an example of a project that we've been involved with in Finland, a little bit further north than Australia and a little bit further north than Switzerland. Um, it's called Cello. Cello is a shopping centre in Helsinki. Uh, it's a bit like a Chadston Chase, not like a Westfields, a bit more upmarket than a Westfields. Is there anyone from Westfields here? I hope not. Um, it's the second largest shopping centre in Finland Number one, based on uh, visitors, which are 23 million visitors per year. I'm not quite sure if there's much more to do in Finland in the middle of winter than to go shopping. Um, 170 shops. Uh, it's already lead platinum for existing buildings, so this, the, the shopping mall is running very efficient. And Siemens has a long establishment with this customer, uh, established relationship. So we... Even though it's running uh, lead platinum for existing buildings, we connected up 150, 1,500 data points. We applied our cloud-based fault detection diagnostic software to it. Um, through their dedicated operations manager, we were able to reduce 50% of the spend for district heating, uh, which equated to about $120,000 of energy a year. There was an issue that we didn't see with how the district heating was working with the heat wheels for the air handling units. Uh, and until we actually dug into it deeper and using digitalisation and the tools that we have available today, this became apparent. But that wasn't enough. They brought us back to the table and said, we have an issue with the grid. Fin grid is under pressure to manage the peak demands during a high season of uh, a high, high demand times. The fin grid is uh, paying incentives for organisations to become and build resiliency 
on their own facility and connecting to the grid. So we developed a unique opportunity combining PV, electrical production, and battery storage. And the storage will allow Cello to purchase when the tariffs are low and when they use and use electricity when the price is high. If more solar electricity is produced and consumed, they'll keep it in the storage and use it at the high peak times. So wrapped up in a performance guarantee by Siemens, so we guarantee the performance of this system, uh, which is a nine-year contract. Uh, it's a complete solution for the customer. So 1.6 megawatts of uh, storage, half a megawatt of solar PV, um, updating the building management system at microgrid controlling because we're connecting back to the grid. We have a demand response solution. As I said, the contract's for nine years. Uh, 480,000 uh, 480, euros of gains in the electricity energy market, so we're getting that benefit back from FinGrid. 470 megawatts of energy production, and we saved another 280 tonnes of uh, CO2 emissions to reduce uh, emissions for the, for the shopping centre. So there's an example of combining all the data that's available the technology, uh, it's also working with the customer, understanding what their KPIs are, what their drivers for their organisation are, and going back and developing a solution that is beneficial for the customer to meet their business goals, and it's also good business for us, for Siemens.